Hey friends, John chapter 7 is again another interesting choice by John regarding the story and the life of Jesus. In this case, Jesus is now at one of the fest festivals that is commonly practiced by all of the Jews. This one, the festival of the tabernacles, this, this time where they would come together, be together for weeks at a time in these booths or these shacks or uh, tabernacles that they used to live in while they were in commute <laughs> from Egypt to the promised land. And so this, this festival is a time where all the Jews come together surrounding Jerusalem. There's this massive gathering, great chance for Jesus to go to where the crowds are. In fact, his brothers kind of pick up on that and say, hey, Jesus, why don't you go with us? To the, this is your chance. Go to where the crowds are at. Let's have this big party. You can, you can take advantage of the celebration and teach what you want to teach and do your miracles and all of the stuff you've been doing. And Jesus says, no, that's not my time yet. And then he shows up later when it was his time. He starts teaching in the temple. Now, if there was a time the Pharisees could do something about it, this was their moment. They could have easily arrested him. They could have captured him. They could have murdered him. They could have assassinated him. There's lots of options they had, but again, it wasn't Jesus' time yet. He finds himself at the temple and he's teaching the synagogue leaders as well as all the people. And before in the previous chapter where the crowds were looking for him, now he's looking for people in the crowds that he specifically is trying to teach and prepare them for what's to come. And in the midst of all this teaching is a phrase that he says that I found very fascinating, especially now living in California. <laughs> John chapter 7, it's two verses actually, 37 and 38. Jesus says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, rivers of living water will flow from within them. I, that's just amazing. Rivers of living water will flow from within them. Jesus is in the midst of Jerusalem, which is the supply of water for Jerusalem comes off the mountaintops. It drains down in these, these rivers or these aqueducts into pools that are surrounding Jerusalem. So they have water supply for the town. Water supply in a festival like the Tabernacles, where lots of people are gathered for weeks, was crucial. In fact, my guess is they were making money off of it. And Jesus is seeing all of this and he says... My supply for you is living water, and it comes from within, not from some outside source. In fact, living in California, I've become to realize and appreciate so much uh, how this works. I mean, there's only two sources for water, for drinking water. One is the rain that comes down the mountains and into the rivers, and then the rivers supply drinking water into the aqueducts and so forth. The other is from springs underground that push the water up through the spring into a aqueduct or some other resource. Both of those have limited supply. Both of those are dependent on God and his weather patterns. Both of those need the blessing of God to stay supplied. And we've already gone through in my short tenure in California gone through several drought seasons in one right now. <laughs> if God doesn't provide the rain and the snow, we don't get the water. Jesus is kind of making the same point. I'm the living water. You need water to live. And all these people gathered in Jerusalem at the Feast of the Tabernacles would need water by the end of that feast and looking for the supply and Jesus says, you're looking at this wrong. I am the living water that feeds you the water of life you will need. And then he says something else that's even more fascinating. It'll come from within. It won't come from an external source. It won't come from the temple. It won't come from the Pharisees. It won't come from the priest, chief priest. It won't, it won't even come from scripture itself, even though the scripture contains it. It'll come from the Holy Spirit within. See, Jesus is alluding to what's going to happen after his death and resurrection, where the Holy Spirit will come and the word of God will come out from within. You will hear the word of God. It'll get into your system. The Spirit will convert it and change it into living water that comes and feeds your soul. Powerful, amazing. No more drought. No more spiritual 
a death and, des and deserts because God will supply your need from the Holy Spirit within. Now, to me, that's just amazing that Jesus would say this at the end of a tabernacle feast when they were all looking for water. And then there'll come a new feast not much longer after this called the Passover, where he will die and be buried and from within come out of a tomb and then send his Holy Spirit to feed us the living water he offers. It's an amazing illusion. illusion? <laughs> it's an amazing illustration of the what Jesus offers us. And he's offering it to you and I today. You don't need to have a soul that's in drought. You can let the Holy Spirit in and he will feed you the living water. God bless you as you do. And we'll see you again next time.